Anton Bruckner was many things, a humble peasant turned acclaimed organist, an eccentric obsessed with death and numbers, a late blooming composer whose symphonies and choral works were monumental in scale and noted for their aura of serenity and grandeur. While contemporaries like Berlioz and Liszt wrote programmatic works full of wild, dazzling effects, Bruckner embraced the sturdy traditions of Austro-German masters. So just who was the man behind the majesty? Bruckner was born in the Austrian village of Ansfelden, and at age 13 was sent off to the Augustiner Monastery in St. Florian. He didn't really leave the town until middle age, having spent his younger days studying advanced harmony, teaching elementary school, and training to be one of the top organists of his day. At age 40, Bruckner finally felt he had the chops to attempt large-scale works, starting with his mass in D minor. This was followed by the first of eight complete symphonies, plus an unfinished ninth that would occupy him over the next 25 years. It's often said that Bruckner's orchestrations evoke the sonorities of Baroque organs, but there are other influences too, including the folk dances of Austria, which animate his scherzos. The popular fourth symphony, titled The Romantic, is dotted with references to bucolic landscapes and hunting calls. Being Bruckner wasn't easy. A peasant to the core, he never lost his rural accent, ill-fitting clothes, or social awkwardness, even as he landed a teaching post at the Vienna Conservatory. Hypersensitive to criticism, he rewrote many of his symphonies, leaving them in a tangle of published editions. And while Bruckner was frustrated in his private life, never marrying, he eventually became an honored figure in Vienna. The Seventh Symphony, a tribute to Richard Wagner, was a huge success and led to his wider appreciation throughout Europe. The massive, boldly designed Eighth Symphony was favorably compared to Beethoven's Ninth. Bruckner died in 1896 and was buried at St. Florian. He never composed an opera and left little chamber music, but his symphonies filled an evolutionary link between Schubert and Mahler and even Schoenberg. It's music that repays the patient listener and thrills quite unlike any other. Mm -hmm.